In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe how materials flow in a process cost system and how to account for them. So if we see a discussion question or essay question like this, we may first want to take a look at the key terms here. The key terms being materials. We're looking at the material flow and we're looking at a process cost system. So we want to see a process cost system. So we may first want to define that then. What is a process cost system? How do the materials then relate to the process cost system? If we're looking at an area where we're just concentrated in on the process cost system like here, then that might seem somewhat obvious. But if you're looking at a more broad type of topic where you're covering you know, a lot of different types of topics, then of course it might be the first thing you want to start with is saying, okay, we're talking about a process cost system. Let's define what a process cost system is because we need to basically have a foundation there before we'll talk about the materials that will then flow through that process cost system. And you might pick up a few points just by uh, putting that down first. So note that the process cost system is one of the two major types of systems that manufacturing type companies will use. We'll typically compare and contrast the process cost system with a job cost system. So we hear flowing through or thinking about a uh, process cost system and now we're considering the materials. So we might want to list out, well, what does it mean to be materials with relation to a process cost system? The process cost system is tracking inventory uh, through the process to get to ending inventory that we will then sell. Inventory typically consists of materials, raw materials, and it is going to consist of labor and overhead. We hear, of course, concentrating on the raw materials. So what happens with the raw materials? And then we can go through the process of, you know, how does the raw materials go through? We can list out the actual journal entries if we need to do so. Uh, typically, first off, we would purchase the raw materials that we're going to use for inventory. We're typically talking about those materials used for inventory. We would normally uh, debit the raw materials, which would be a type of inventory account typically, and credit accounts payable or cash if we bought it. There's going to be direct materials. There might be indirect materials as well. And we might track the indirect materials in a separate account if we choose to. So if we bought indirect materials, those that aren't used or can't be tracked directly to the process, then we might debit uh, indirect materials and, and credit accounts payable as well when we purchase the indirect materials. And then typically we're going, we're going to go through the process and start the process of our inventory, start converting the materials to the work in process. Normally we'll take the materials then and we'll take them out of the materials and we'll put them into the work in process and start to work on them. And from the accounting standpoint, that would be reducing the materials account, an asset. We would credit it, reducing it. And then we would debit the other inventory account, which would be work in process. So now we've taken the materials, we've put it into work in process. If we have any indirect materials and we track those separately, we might do the same thing. We might uh, debit work in process or debit, I'm sorry, overhead in that case to put it in the overhead and then credit uh, the work in process account. So then we'd have the materials and then typically the materials would flow through. If there's more than one process, then of course it would flow through to the second process once completed. So we'd have the units that would have flown through to from the one work in process account. And then if they go through another process, they would go to the other process. Process two would be debited for the amount that had been completed, the work in process from one, and then work in process from the first account would be credited. And the materials would then flow through to the second process. And then of course they would flow through finally to finished goods at some point. So we would credit the work in process and debit finished goods, which would be the inventory. So then they would be in inventory and then at some point we would finally sell the inventory and the finished goods would be included in that ending inventory. Notice as we go through the work and process, we would also, we're tracking, we're thinking about the materials, but there would also be uh, labor and overhead that would be applied out. And then once we sell it, it would then be leaving finished goods inventory with a credit and debiting cost of goods sold when it's actually sold along with the sales journal entry which would be a credit to sales and a debit to accounts receivable or cash.